All right, back for another beer review, and today I'll be reviewing yet another beer from the Dogfish Head Craft Brewery, and they're out of Milton, Delaware, and this is their Pennsylvania Tuxedo, the 2023 release. So they're calling this one a pale ale brewed with spruce tips. It comes in at 8.5% alcohol by volume, 50 IBUs at the time of review. This can is just under seven weeks old, but it also has a Best Buy date of April of 2024. So according to Dogfish Head, we should be more than fine. Now, something weird about this beer. I thought I had it before, but I checked my untapped check-ins. Nope, I know I haven't reviewed this one, but something's familiar about the label, about the logo. I just feel like I've had this one before, but I can't remember, so maybe not. But anyway, this is Imperial Pale Ale, more or less uh, brewed with the spruce tips. And on the back, they have a little bit of a spiel. I'll read the first sentence because the second one kind of talks about tasting notes. It says, Pennsylvania Tuxedo pays homage to the flannel suited uh, hunters and gatherers who dwell deep in the backcountry woods of central PA. Paul, is that you, buddy? Buddy, I think that's you. So anyway, yeah, this is basically, you know, uh, Imperial Pale Ale with spruce tips. And I over the years have come to really enjoy spruce beers. You just don't see them all that often. So um, yeah, we're gonna use the hashtag proper glassware. We'll see uh, how this one works out. I hate this glass and I love it. Uh, aromatically speaking, it's fantastic. Uh, it's a pain in the ass to clean. Usually get dirty glass mafia, uh, but at the end of the day, I think it, beers look beautiful in this glass. So um, I've had this glass for like 10 years. So yeah, we got a little dirty glass mafia, not much, very, big on the carbonation there is a nucleation at the bottom to kind of promote that carbonation and i love i mean i just love this label you know you got the flannel going on it's a it's simple but i think fucking is perfect honestly anyway oh that looks like an old school uh, no that looks like an old school like double ip has it like burnt orange deeper orange color uh crystal clear uh, you can see right through it good carbonation like i said about a two two and a half finger uh soap sudsy looking head that has more of a kind of tannish kind of tinge to it hold it up to the light in the glassware absolutely fucking fantastic i think that looks awesome that looks like an awesome beer it's something that i would love to drink but let's get our nose in here first Okay, so I was expecting the spruce to be a little bit more, Paul, bombastic. I, I really did. I, I thought it was going to kind of jump out of the glass and into my nostrils. There's like an edge there to like a sprucey, piney kind of just like feel to it. But like, I might be stretching. There is a bunch of, uh, <laughs> there's like caramel malt or what seems to be like a caramel malt kind of vibe. Has like a caramel white bread has a nice citrus kind of note to it. It's, it's orange, it's uh, white grapefruit, maybe a touch of like a tangerine, underripened uh, peach, apricot. It kind of smells like an old, an old school, um, like 90 minute, like it, it kind of has like a 90 minute vibe to it. Not as intense with the, the hops, but like the malt base along with the hops is, is reminiscent of maybe like a faded uh, 90 minute. There, there is something that's sprucey, but it's mixing in with the hops and like the malt, and, and it's kind of weird. It's almost coming off more minty than anything else. Yeah, like a little bit of like a mint. Like a spearmint or something. Maybe a touch of like a nondescript red berry. I know, I just pulled that out of my ass. Yeah, I know. You're like, what? Where did that come from? I feel yes, it did. Yeah, I mean, it kind of smells like an old school, like an old school Imperial IPA. They say it's a pale ale, 8.5%, but it's it's just, again, more of an old school Imperial slash double IPA. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm hoping the spruce comes a little bit more to the forefront in the taste, but let's get into it. Cheers, everyone. That's wild. Man, I really like this. Nothing, almost nothing in the nose indicated how spruce forward this beer is in the taste. Like if I was doing this blind, there was no way in the taste I would have said anything in relation to spruce at all. The reason why I said I was getting edges of it maybe a little bit was because I know it's in here and it's like, okay, that's reminiscent. Then I said mint, right? In the taste, it's definitely spruce through and through. And it's an omnipresent spruce. Like if you don't like spruce tips, you don't like spruce in general, yeah, no. Like you, you don't want to pick this one up. I do. And I like it. 
It's not overblown though. It's not too much off of that first sip. We'll go another sip, talk body mouthfeel, and let it kind of sit there and, and, and ponder what I want to say about the spruce itself. But off of that first rip, it's very nicely integrated into the base beer. Buying this is higher side medium, lower side full, 8.5%. I think it's appropriate. Uh, the aforementioned Paul, I just referenced Paul 8,000 times in this review because he's in PA. And um, this beer is made for him. Maybe not though. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, um, it's not really thin. Uh, it could be thin by some, Paul. Uh, Maybe a bit thin. But for me, I think it's nice. The mouthfeel, it has a smooth, almost slightly creamy kind of sensation, but this is like mild to moderately carbonated, more approaching moderate. It's an old school mouthfeel with a little bit more of like a, a creaminess. The taste, so omnipresent spruce all over the palate. It is a predominant note, but doesn't step in the way. Up front, definitely get a little bit of like a caramel, white bread, kind of malt sensation. And that kind of dives underneath the palate and I don't really hear from it again until like the back of the palate. And then after that, I get, again, that citrus. It has a nice, like, there's a twang to like an orange and a ruby red grapefruit right at the forefront. It's almost like a slight tartness. Midway through the palate, red berries. I don't know what hops are in here. I probably should have looked it up, but I, I wouldn't be surprised, uh, surprised if like mosaics in here. It has a little bit of like a dank, dank berry thing going on. It's more of like a, a, a red berry than anything. Uh, there's underlying like uh, under um, ripened white peach maybe apricot. As it continues on, the spruce kind of, I think, ramps up on the back of the palate a little bit for me. And it has a sprucey kind of like piney, um, slightly dank and earthy finish. There's a lot going on in the finish. I think the finish is very complex. I was expecting the bitterness to be like gripping me and it's not. It's like mild to moderately bitter, smack dab in the middle. It's I'd say semi-dry. There is a nice malt sweetness up front that carries on through the palate. But I think this is pretty well balanced. It might even lean a little bit sweet, like 60 to 40, 60% to 40% sweetness to uh, bitterness or sweetness to uh, dryness. But it's not too sweet. It's just, I was expecting more of a bitterness. But as I'm sitting here and talking to you and just letting it kind of, the dryness and the, and the bitterness kind of sit in my palate. So maybe it is more like 55, 45. Um, just slightly unbalanced to the sweet side of things. But very minute issue, and I honestly, unless I drank like an entire four pack, I probably wouldn't even notice. 8.5%, there is a warming into the chest. I can tell it's a bigger beer on the palate. It's not boozy, but it's definitely noticeable that this is like an imperial beer of some sort. I'd probably guess like eight if I was doing this blind based on the body, the flavors, and kind of what I'm getting with the warming in the chest. I'd, I'd guess probably eight. Would I say eight and a half? No. Does it hide the alcohol well? Probably not, but does it really matter? No, because it's not boozy or astringent or anything. This is a fun fucking beer. Um, I can't believe I never picked this one up. I know a, uh, a friend of mine and... Um, uh, owner of Rude and Bottled, Chris, he, uh, he, this is his favorite beer. And when he was like, oh, I'm, when that comes in, I'm going to get cases of it. He loves it. And I can see why somebody would love this beer and like want to buy cases of it. Uh, if you like that spruce kind of feel and like an old school, like Imperial IPA kind of, uh, kind of uh, feeling to the beer and something that's just different, I think, I think this would be the beer. Man, I'm, I'm as I drink it more, I'm glad I'm not getting that minty kind of thing I was getting in the nose, like a spearmint, or even like a slight toothpaste. Kind of, in, the, in the taste, it's definitely spruce, and it's building, and it's beautiful. We'll see by the end of the glass if uh, it's too much. I don't think it's going to be, because there's enough going on from the base beer that I think it's fine. Um, yeah, this is really good. I enjoy this one. So Pennsylvania Tuxedo, the 2023 release from Dogfish Head. Absolutely no issues giving this a low 425. I'm going to go 4.2. This is resonating with me quite a bit. For what they're going for, a spruce tip, basically Imperial Palo, this is like a fucking, almost a five. This is like a four, eight. Maybe, fuck it, it's probably a five out of five. Like this is, for what they've, what they've attempted to do with this beer, I think they've done a great job. And I know this beer has been out there for probably like close to 10 years now. So I feel like I've had this one before, but tasting it, it's not ringing any bells. So probably not. And I'm just an idiot. I am an idiot. I know that, but. Price point availability. Uh, I really don't know other than I, I saw a single of it. I bought it. I think it was like $3.75 for the single. Um, I don't know. If it comes in four packs of the 16-ounce cans, probably like $14, $16 a four-pack. It's probably going to be different where you are. If you've seen this one, does it come in anything other than the, the, um, 
the four packs or, or the 16 ounce cans? Does it come in 12 ounce cans? Does it come in bottles? I have no idea. All I saw was this. I bought it and here we are. And availability is Dogfish Head. If you see Dogfish Head, you should have seen this in the past month, maybe six weeks. This is the uh, their fall seasonal. Um, you know, by the time I post this review, it's probably going to be early December-ish. So uh, it might not still be hanging out on your shelves. All I know is I might buy this again next year and just see how it is. Maybe I won't review it, but I think I'll just grab it and just see. Because um, this is a fun fucking beer. And I gave it a 4.2 out of 5. So if you've had this one before, post in the comment section. Let me know. If you've had prior uh, versions of this, is there any batch variation? Um, was it always 8.5%? I have no idea. I didn't really do much research on this beer. And I really don't want to review beers. I just kind of maybe go to their website or the Instagram and just see if there's any nugget of information that I should be privy to. For this one, I really didn't do anything at all almost. So here we are. So... If you have any, form, any more information about this beer, post in the comment section. I appreciate everybody stopping by for another beer review here on the Beer Patrol to the next one. Cheers.